For the entire time that I've been making videos, I've used the Elgato HD60S to record game footage, and I was pretty satisfied for a long time. Unfortunately, I've run into a couple of issues lately. In order to record older game consoles, I've been using the RetroTINK 2X. If you've watched my videos, you've probably seen it in action. In conjunction with the Elgato's HDMI pass-through, this was perfect for normal play on an LCD TV, but an issue arose when I started capturing footage. For some reason, when I would have the Elgato software output my videos as MP4 files, the audio would slowly start to desync. I'll show you what I mean. This is the beginning of a recording I made of Shining Force CD on the Sega Genesis slash Sega CD. And this is about 30 minutes in. Notice how the audio is completely out of whack. What's actually happening here is that the audio is playing back faster than the video, or maybe the video is playing slower? I don't know. Either way, the audio gets way far ahead of the video. Everything starts off synchronized, but gets worse and worse as the recording goes on. For the rest of this video, I will refer to this as the desync issue. Yeah, there's more problems than just this one. Anyway, I searched all over the internet for a solution, and I found out that the Elgato creates transport stream files, or TS files, that it uses to then convert to MP4. Sure enough, when I watched the TS files using Media Player or VLC, it played back just fine. Searching some forums, I found that it's possible to use TS files in Adobe Premiere, so I gave that a shot. Now for some people, this could very well solve your desync issue. But, for me, this is where I learned about variable frame rate. What this means is that when I'm recording, instead of getting a stable 60 frames per second being recorded by the Elgato, instead it tends to jump around a little bit, and that's why I get the audio getting out of sync when I throw it into Adobe, because it just isn't built to handle that. Apparently, my TS files were being recorded at a variable frame rate, and because of this, even though they play back just fine in Windows Media Player, in Adobe Premiere, they slowly get out of sync. This was obviously incredibly frustrating. Thankfully, I was, however, able to find a workaround. If you take the TS files and throw them into a program called Handbrake, then you can customize how they will be spit out as MP4 files, and for some reason, when they go through Handbrake, they do not suffer from these weird audio issues. Unfortunately, it's much more time consuming than just using the Elgato software, and for me, this was not a permanent solution, but it might work for you. It was at this point that I contacted Elgato support for some answers. To my surprise, they're open every single day of the week, 8am to 8pm Pacific Standard Time, which is actually kind of amazing. A guy named Douglas answered and I told him everything that I discovered. After answering some of his questions, I soon realized that I was only getting the desync issues when I recorded Sega Genesis footage, and only when I used the RetroTINK 2X. Due to the current global pandemic, I couldn't really try testing this on too many other consoles, but I do happen to have my backup recordings with me, so I went back and took a look at old footage I recorded with the capture device before I got my RetroTINK. Sure enough, the footage I captured using composite video on a generic upscaler had no audio desync issues. Here's the generic upscaler footage at the beginning. And 10 minutes in, you can see it's still in sync. And here's the retro tink at the beginning. And this time at 10 minutes in, we have audio desync. Again, notice that the audio is actually getting ahead of the video. The reason I point this out is because after going through some more files, I found that when I was recording Castlevania Adventure on my Switch recently, directly into the Elgato, I also had audio desync issues. However, if you notice here, this is about 40 minutes into the recording, the audio is actually behind the video this time, and it's not nearly as extreme as it was on my recordings using the RetroTINK and my Sega Genesis. The audio starts off in sync, but over time slowly starts to fall behind the video. From here on out, I shall refer to this issue as the audio delay issue. 
Now, this tipped me off that it was not my consoles or my upscaler that were the root of the issue, but rather my Elgato, or perhaps just the Elgato software, at least for the audio delay issue. After some more research online, I found out that you can get the Elgato to work using the free capture software OBS. It was easy enough to set up, all you have to do is select video capture and choose the Elgato device and hit record. It records directly to MP4 and sure enough there were no audio desynchronization of any kind. With OBS I had no need to use Handbrake or mess around with TS files. Hopefully that will fix this problem for most of you. If you're having audio issues and you're using the Elgato software to record, I recommend switching to OBS. However, I was still curious as to what was causing that first desync issue and why it was different from just a regular audio delay. I needed to conduct further tests. Having solved both of my issues just by switching to OBS, I decided to try and find exactly what was causing the weird Genesis-specific desync issue. At this point, I had three suspects. The first was the Genesis itself. I've used multiple Genesis while recording and they all exhibited this issue even with the Sega CD attached. Maybe something about the way it outputs video and audio is messing stuff up? I don't know. The second was the RetroTink. I only seemed to be getting the desync issue when I recorded using it as an analog to digital converter to the Elgato, since as I just mentioned, I didn't seem to have any issues when I was using my generic upscaler way back in the day. And the third suspect was the Genesis component cables. I don't know how or why they would be causing this kind of issue, but they were the only cables that I'd used when recording with my RetroTink. The first test I did was to switch out the console. I hooked up my Sega Saturn to the RetroTink instead and tried recording about 30 minutes of gameplay. The desync issue was not present, but the audio delay issue was, and it seemed worse than it had in the Castlevania recording. This made me think the desync issue probably lay with the Genesis, but just to be sure I went ahead and did some further testing. I switched out the RetroTINK for the OSSC and tried recording some Genesis footage with the component cables. Instead of getting the desync issue, my capture had the audio delay issue again. I decided to do one more test just to follow up and confirm, and recorded some Saturn footage using the OSSC instead of the RetroTINK. Surely enough, it also had the audio delay issue. And the last test that I did was with the component cables. So I took the component cables out of the RetroTINK, switched in the composite cables, and the desync issue was back. It seems like for some reason, the RetroTINK combined with the Genesis and Elgato just meshed together in some bizarre way that causes the audio to get ahead of the video as opposed to falling behind. I also tried recording with the RetroTINK and my Genesis using OBS instead of Elgato software, and there were no issues whatsoever, so it's definitely an Elgato software issue and not the capture card. Clear. So I really have no idea what causes the difference between the desync issue and the audio delay issue. I'm just glad that OBS solves both of them. If you're into retro gaming and looking for a good capture card, you may want to think again if you were looking at the Elgato HD60S. These audio issues that the software side left me with were a nightmare to try and figure out. On top of that, it also doesn't work with the pound HDMI cable for the Sega Dreamcast, or the line tripling, quadrupling, or quintupling modes of the OSSC. So now I'm on the market for a new capture device so that I can get the best video quality out of my old consoles without <laughs> having to deal with any crazy audio issues anymore. Hopefully this was interesting and or helpful for at least someone out there. If you have any suggestions for a new capture card that works well with the OSSC, please let me know. I need that 5X feature in my life. Anyways, I'm Boffner and I'll see you all next time!